we'll put some spacers on this thing. Um, discovered I really like the look of spacers on the trucks. So they bring the wheel out, uh, make the tire look a little bit bigger. Um, I don't want to change the wheels. It's a lot. It's really expensive to do that. And, um, I kind of like factory wheels a lot of times better than aftermarket wheels. So I'd rather just give my wheels a little more pop that come on the trucks. And these are painted black. I painted them a couple years, a few years, probably four or five years ago. I think I might change the color of those. So uh, let's see about doing that too. Uh, and you know, a lot of folks have asked me to do some more videos on the FJ60. I haven't done much on that. The uh, current wheels I have on the truck. It's a black wheel, just a satin black. Looks nice. I mean, it's a, I like the satin black. I may stick with it. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about changing these to a really dark gray. But uh, here's, I'm gonna try to get a, a difference on the stance here. So here's a before we put the spacers on. And I'm going with a spider tracks spacer. Get to the other side here. There's the back here, so you can kind of see the, the where the wheel is sitting in the fender. Let's go over here. Get a frontal view. Let's see here. So there you go. These sixties really tuck the wheels into the fender quite a bit. So here's the spider tracks spacers. These are a one and a half inch spacer. I tend to only buy spider tracks spacers. I'm not doing any kind of advertising for these guys. They, uh, so here's what you get in the box. Uh, so you, you get, they do provide some red Loctite, which is uh, really nice. You do want to use that. Got the bolts. I'm sorry, lug nuts here. Um, I feel like uh, these are these are made in the USA. Um, they're probably better than I have bought. After, like the uh, eBay spacers before, and I've not necessarily had any problems with the spacers, but I have had problems with adapters. So, needless to say, um, I won't ever probably use an adapter again uh, unless it's made by Spider Tracks. I did use an eBay adapter for a trailer camper one time, and it flipped. So. Uh, wheel came off, wasn't pretty. Um, but I think with good spacers, uh, you're safe. You're not going to have a problem. Uh, you know, and a lot of guys will, uh, <clears throat> you know, really down using spacers and uh, advocate just buying different wheels. But I don't really like changing my factory wheel look. So. I'd rather just spend a little bit more. These are or pri they are pricier for a Spider Tracks spacer, uh, but I think they're good quality. So um, I feel safe with those. Uh, put my family in the truck and uh, using a good product, and uh, want to uh, just uh, you know do the safest thing I can. So, so all right, let's get this truck. This is popped right off. By the way. Uh, if you've got these caps, still using them on your 60. Really easy to pull these off. Uh, spray paint them with nice gloss black. There's even a Sharpie that you can buy that is, it's like a gold metallic Sharpie. And it's a, an exact match almost to the factory Toyota lettering in these. So, let's here. So, Helps clean it up, make it look nice.
Okay, you want to take some sandpaper. Off these guys so you get a nice flush mounting to your spacer. Next step I like to do is put some fresh paint on everything. Uh, these You do see these through your wheels if you're keeping these trucks clean and not wheeling them. Uh, so I'm gonna, I think I'm going to change my wheels to a gray paint, so uh, the gray, dark gray color. So uh, if I've got this behind it, it's going to just kind of clash because this is a dark gray. So I'm going to paint this black. Using a shield here just to make sure I don't get paint where I don't want it. Okay, we'll let that we'll let that dry and we'll go on to the next one. Okay, now we're just doing a little clean up with some paint. I've cleaned everything, I've sanded the surface uh, before I put my little spicer on one to just touch up a couple things. Make it look nice and pretty. Part of the center hub will be covered up. So you don't have to get it all, but, but, but there are a couple nicks on the center hub, so that takes care of that.
Okay, so that one's ready for a, that one is ready for the uh, face. I'm leaving this area unpainted because that's where my wheel spacer is going to go. This center piece does show if you decide not to run your center caps in. I'm going to have the center caps in, but I'm just going to paint. Just what if I change my mind and I want to run it without center caps? So I don't know. Sanded everything on the hub, make sure we get a nice clean uh, surface to put our, our wheel spacer on to. And uh, I've hit the calipers with some paint, new fresh paint, clean, hit stuff underneath here, the wheel well with some fresh paint, cleaned it up. So it's all good, you don't have to do all that, but I'm just your stud. You want it concentrated where your stud, or your uh, lug nut's gonna be sitting on it where it gets the best uh, lock on it so i'm just going to put this uh, uh maybe get a little view of that lock tight on there and so let's get some put some more on here and these the lock tight is provided by these spider tracks uh spacers that came that came with it so So you can use one, two per two per uh, pair of spacers. I guess it's the idea they want you to do. So I'm just gonna get plenty on there. Can't, can't hurt to have plenty of Loctite on there. This is red Loctite, so this is the, typically the strongest. Okay, this is uh, this is the hub uh, that I got, or the, the spacer I've got. It's model number WHS005. Um, you can get these on, I got these on Amazon. You can get them on Slee also, Slee.com. But uh, these do fit over the hub like that nicely. And I like to uh, get my that's going here from my lug nuts going here. Just by hand, just to kind of have to fill them.
All right, I got this started. Tom's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and get all these started here. I'm gonna run them down gently with the drill. So uh, why do you want to do spacers? Well, I do them because um, I like the look. Uh, I like the look and it gives the truck a nicer stance. It brings the wheel out and makes the tires look a, a little more beefy, I think. And this 60 is so narrow, uh, the track's so narrow, that I also wanted to do it on this because I believe it would give it a little better handling. Uh, I've done spacers on about everything I have, except my wife's car, she won't let me touch it. But uh, I do like the look. And I do feel like it makes them, makes, uh, the, it made my 80 series feel a lot more uh, stable on the road. It made my 100 series feel a little more stable on the road. And I even think it made the 911, the Porsche 911, feel a little more stable on the road. So, uh, I mean, even though it's very stable, but it gave it a wider track. And uh, so I'm just going to run these down very gently here because you want to do a. That's already. You don't want to torque these down yet. You just want to. Run them down, and you want to do a crisscross pattern. You want to uh, distribute the torque on your spacer. So these are these. Are, I'm just really lightly doing this. This is not torquing this down. You know I mean, this is driven. I might put a little more force to it. Now, I will get my torque wrench out. I've got this torque uh, uh, wrench set to 80 pounds. I'm sorry, 90 pounds. So the instructions say uh, 90. I'm gonna put, use a screwdriver to keep my rotor from turning. Turn that out. When I torque on this, it's gonna work. So, all right. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna get it to torques back yet. I'm just gonna I'm still do my crisscross pattern. I want everything nice and evenly distributed here. So these things are made out of aluminum. So I wanna be, wanna adhere to the instructions on that. So. Work my way around, still going from one side to the other side. That one actually torqued out. That one's torqued out. Now you can hear it hitting 90 pounds. So. Just trying to evenly. Go from one side to the other.
usually these stay good. I've never, you know, I've, I've come back and check them after, you know, 50 to 100 miles and um, I did it again. But uh, they usually stay pretty good. Uh, I've never had, had them be loose. Uh, so the instructions say, come back after 50 miles and retorque them at 80 pounds. So you torque them initially at 90, then you're coming back and you're checking them at 80. So the idea behind that is that you don't break the thread locker on it. You don't want to break them loose. If they're good, leave them alone. You want them, so you hit them with a little less torque just to make sure they're, they're still snug and tight. So that's about it on that. Uh, we've already got, let's see, we've got this one over here. Um, <clears throat> that was done. Just got, just got to do the rear and I'll be finished. And then I'll paint the wheels and throw those on and I'll do that in a separate video.